you fight the good fight of faith and take a hold of the things that Jesus paid for you to have. If you're going to have to change your focus, why not change it to the place that will give you the greatest life? growth. We thank you for multiplication of lives, the 30% increase in every way, the 30% in growth, in, in personal growth, in the development of us as we follow you, Father. But then from that development, everything that you've called us to, it begins to increase supernaturally, and we thank you for it. What you do privately is translated publicly, and you're either translating publicly like or darkness. darkness. Private will be translated publicly and it will be translated exactly the way it is. How it is in private is how it's going to be translated in public. Private, private isn't, isn't private. private. I'm Kathy Shropshire. Welcome to Victory, the Road to Success. of perfect ease. He saw in his heart exactly how creation should be. He then spoke what he saw, and it became what we see. So man's only labor was to have faith and receive. As it pertains to mankind, he made it quite clear. They were built for eternity, never to fear. In his image, they were fashioned, both spirit and soul, giving all his personal resources to achieve that goal. Equipped with his mind, nothing was hidden. An abundant life, they were freely given. Health, prosperity, they had for the asking, with peace and joy from everlasting to everlasting. the king of kings and 
the Lord of Lords. What an honor it is for when people see my life. They don't see me, my selfish ambition, my dreams, my desires. They see him. Faith in God changes things. It changes things. It doesn't make them worse. It makes them better. It changes your kids. It changes your finances. It changes your health. Faith in God changes things. He is a loving, perfect father. I don't care if it's a bad diagnosis. I don't care if it's a mental issue. in Hobbs, New Mexico right now. I can see it right now. It's happening. There's a miracle happening in Hobbs. Well, I started sensing some things in my hotel room. God's dispatching more angels to this local church for the purpose of miracle power. And because he's found a place where his word is honored and glorified, he can bless me. And when he finds a place that will allow him that, he's pleased to dispatch heavenly artillery. Father, we thank you for this house of miracles, this house of healing, this house where people's minds are set free and set right, where lives are put back on course. I thank you, Father, for multiplied miracles. We thank you for divine increase, divine multiplication, and that people will come. They won't just come from this direct vicinity, but from regions far off. They'll drive for hours. 
hours to get here because they are in life and death situations. And in those life and death situations, word will reach their ears about what God is doing in this place and what they can receive here. And they will come. I'm seeing something in my spirit. In 2024, I'm going to come here to Hobbs and there's a stadium. I don't know what you have here, but we're going to do a one-day stadium event here in Hobbs. I see it. I saw it unfold. I'm standing here and it's shaking me. The devil's not going to have this city. God's going to shake this city. Every time I see this property, I see faith. Faith in God. And our faith is to be tangible for others to recognize. Father, I say it by the Spirit. This is not something I'm choosing to say. It's something you are directing to be said. A 30% increase upon this place. A 30% increase in every flow, in every manifestation. A 30% increase in revelation, in manifestations, in provision. Father, we thank you for the dynamic increase. And certainly that's not the end of it, but it is the next step of it. I'm just going to speak out of my spirit. The same way God turned over land and property and made building easy for me, the Lord's going to reward this church in the time to come as this church continues to grow and multiply. Your next move, property and building wise, will be the easiest move you ever made. It'll be like picking out a sweater at the store. You'll get the money and the property of the building without spending any of the money in Jesus. There will be a tsunami of prosperity coming into your house. And I see those big, huge waves coming in, coming into all of you, all of your businesses, all of you personally. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Hallelujah. Come on, say the Lord is good. And His mercy endures forever. Say it again. The Lord is good. That he's long-suffering, he's patient, he's kind. Aren't you grateful that the blessing is working today? That you're healed, that you're anointed, that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We let everything that was that is within us bless you, Lord. We thank you for the name. Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, we can stir ourselves up and put ourselves in remembrance that we are right now more than conquerors. Amen? Amen. Well, it's great to see you in church today. If you are here with us for the very first time, welcome to Choose Life Church. Can we give our first time guests a great big round of applause? We're so honored that you're here as our guest today. We'd love the opportunity to connect with you. We have two Connect Centers out in the lobby. We'd love for you. Just stop by, mention that it's your first time. We want to connect with you and also give you a gift. And then those of you with us online, thank you for being with us as well. Let's give them a great big round of applause. We're so glad you tuned in. We know that you're going to be strengthened and encouraged today. Yes, it is sweet. 
Sunday, and we celebrate Sweet Sunday because it is so sweet to be loved by our Father God. So go ahead and have a seat. We've got a couple of announcements we're going to go over before we jump back into worship and then hear the word. We are giving away, though, because it's Sweet Sunday, a delicious cookie platter. So please get out your tickets. Oh, yeah. That looks delicious. Cram-packed big Ooh, old cookies. A, let me get a winner here. Oh, Get a winner, winner. Cookie got a winner dinner. right here. Here we go. And the winner is three, six, nine, five, one, one, seven. <laughs> that Mama was Sarah. awesome, Miss Sarah. That was so great. <laughs> She just rose up. Yes, that was perfect. She's Enjoy. always cooking for everybody else. She it's about is. time she got some cookies. She is such a blessing. She is. Well, hey, we want to let you know we have Kingdom Business Fellowship on Tuesday night. It's at 7 p.m. You can actually come at 645, enjoy some light refreshments out in the lobby. And listen, you don't have to be a business owner to come to Kingdom Business Fellowship. You can be an employee or maybe you have aspirations to start a business. It's important that you come and be a part of these great meetings. And we don't do this just for fun. We do this at the direction of the Lord. And we know that the Lord is going to raise up people to fund the end time harvest. This is not just wealth with no purpose. No, God designed for us to be wealthy, but there's purpose behind our wealth. So we want you to come to KBF on Tuesday night and you'll be blessed. Yes. And y'all Sunday is Easter Sunday. So make sure you're here. And remember what I said, 86% of people will come to church on Easter if they're just asked. So ask people to come to church, bring them here. We want them exposed to the love of God and the goodness of God. We have some fun stuff planned in honor of Easter. Jesus is alive. Aren't y'all glad we serve a risen savior. We're not serving a dead God, a dead deity today. We're not serving the earth today. We're serving the creator of the earth today. And so we have so much to celebrate. So I would encourage you to come next Sunday, 845, 1045, and bring everybody that you know, because people come to church on Easter, bring them so they can be exposed to the love of God and the goodness of God. It's going to be a great time. Yes, it is. And for those of you who don't know, Easter is our anniversary. So we're celebrating our 36th anniversary. Let's take a look at this ad. They saw him raised from the dead. It's time for the church to get strong again. Then all of heaven rejoices with us. They saw him walk through the walls. They saw the holes in his hands and his feet. They saw the, the, the hole in his side. You don't die for a lie. And the church are the only ones that can come down in 3D and hold back iniquity and take everything that the devil has stolen. I will not allow anything that's happening in this world around me to distract me. And because of it, everybody's going to know that something is happening to you. make plans now you do not want to miss it it's going to be absolutely amazing I, even just watching that I, I just get so encouraged that those people would make time in their schedule to come to Hobbs America and it's not a coincidence obviously those people pray uh, and they feel led to come and be a part of this great anniversary conference so if they feel led to come don't you think it makes sense that you should feel led to come uh, we're going to have a great time with or without you but we don't want you to miss out so make plans mark your calendars also invite your friends and family tell them they can come stay at your house eat all your food it's going be a great time. You don't want to miss it. Yes, you do not want to miss it. And of course, the kids will have something amazing going on as well. At the same time, we'll have our own conference. But those things are so special. So go ahead and even now begin stirring yourself up for the deposits that are going to be made by these amazing generals of the faith. So we also have another special thing coming up, and that is our women's conference. Take a look at this.
Jesus did, that he kicked his butt, he went to hell, kicked his butt, and took the keys away from him, and then restored that power to you and me. You are made to dominate. What an honor it is to represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What an honor for when people see my life, they don't see me, my selfish ambition, my dreams, my desires, they see him. Faith in God changes things. It changes things. It doesn't make them worse. It makes them better. It changes your kick. It changes your finances. It changes your health. Faith in God changes things. He is a loving, perfect father. I don't care if it's a bad diagnosis. I don't care if it's a mental issue. I don't care if it's a cash issue. I don't care what it is. That means nothing to God. What he's interested in is you living at perfect peace. And when you come into the blood of Jesus, you are no longer that race. You're part of a new race. You're part of a new family. God family. You're going to make it financially. You're going to make it in your health. I'm telling you, we serve a good God. He's here tonight to meet your every need. He's going to help you. He's going to see to it that you go over and not under. He's going to give you everything you need. I want to enlist all you women as evangelists, as preachers, to get out there and bring the gospel to those people. The word tells us that the women who proclaim the gospel are a great host. Y'all, that is going to be an amazing time. And so notice, like, we're going to have morning sessions too. So take some time off if you're able. Take all the days off if you're able. If not, then just at least a couple of the days. It's going to be an amazing time for us ladies. You do not want to miss it. And then also... This summer, we have some fun stuff coming this summer, too. For those of you who don't know, summer internship is a really big deal around here. We love spending time with the young people here at Choose Life Church, and we're doing it different this summer. So we're going to have two very concentrated weeks with the kids from 9 to 3 for two weeks straight. And then the same thing for the youth, which is 6th through 12th graders from 9 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. These are going to be amazing, life-changing days, life-changing sessions. And it's so important that you get your young person plugged in to summer internship because that's actually a prerequisite to be able to go on the camp trip and camp is a big deal you don't want to miss out on camp but you got to be a part of summer internship you got to be in the flow you got to know what's going on and it's so amazing how the summer just builds and builds and builds for us and the Lord's given us that formula and it works so well so make sure that your young person is signed up for summer internship and if you've never been a part your young person has never been a part of summer internship we're going to put up the QR code we have a QR code of some testimony of some people that attended summer internship, the parent and the kid. So scan this QR code and then you can watch this video. It's a little bit lengthy. That's why we're not taking the time right now to do it. But we want you to see the amazing testimonies of what transpires in that time. Like it is such a big deal. If the kids come hungry, they definitely receive everything that they need. And so you want to make sure your young person is signed up for that. It's $150. And then if they meet those qualifications of finishing summer internship, just like Pastor Greg said, they get to go to camp. And y'all, camp is on another level this um, year. So let's take a look. We're going to watch the kids' camp, and then we're going to watch the youth camp. Let's do them back-to-back. We're excited about camp this summer. Every day can feel like this. Living life with no regrets. can feel like this.
It's going to be so amazing. It's going to be so amazing. I'm so excited about this summer. Even just seeing those video clips of last summer, even seeing the the clips of internship. (laughs) It is going to be life-changing. It's going to be better than ever. And really, the Lord has directed us in a new direction. We're very excited about it. It's going to be amazing. You excited? I'm so excited. (laughs) I hope the teenagers are excited. The kids, I know they're excited. They shout every time we, I mean, anytime I play video in there, they just are crying. They're just excited. They went from shouting for fire week, and I'm like, we're not going to fire week. And then they're like, hey, internship. You know, they just like switch it. You know, they're just like so awesome. And so make they're sure, down. yeah, they're so down. Make sure they know that they're going to have an amazing time. And y'all, literally, we're in our camps, like, we're not alone this year. And so this is going to keep growing and growing and growing um, where other people want to be involved. And so um, it's exciting. We've got exciting things happening, and you want to make sure your young person is signed up. The last day to register for summer internship is May. May 27th. And so if you're not registered for summer internship, you don't get to go to camp. And so you want to make sure you get your young person signed up so that they can be a part. It's going to be a blast. It's my turn again. All right, guys, it is week four of growth track. So if you have already been through all three, or maybe you're missing week four, you don't want to jump in today being your first one. Growth track is just an opportunity for you to get to know our pastors, what we're all about here, and then get plugged in. If you know that this is your church, that's what growth track is all about. But this week is week four. So we're going to dismiss you as soon as we stand you up. We're going to get into a time of worship. We're going to dismiss you through those single set of double doors. If you haven't attended, growth track week four. You've already done some of the other ones. You're missing four or you've already done all of them and you need four. Whatever it is, today is your day to complete growth track and we're so excited to have you as a part of the family. But everyone else, let's stand up. We're going to get into a time of worship, get our hearts ready for the word. Pastor Dean has a word from the Lord for us today and so it matters that we're ready. So let's get ready. Let's get hungry. Stir up your hunger because God has something for us today. is above every single name.
Hallelujah. To the name, the name above every name. Yeshua HaMashiach, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who was and is and is very, very, very soon to come. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For doing what no man can comprehend. Willingly given yourself in the form of your Son. So that we could be a part of your great plan. To know you now, to serve you now. To enjoy the blessings of the sacrificed lamb. As a precursor of what is to come. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you give us in this life all things that pertain to life and godliness. You give us a peace that passes understanding. You give us purpose and the power to fulfill that purpose so that we can be a part of this eternal plan. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your church, your people, your called out ones that you have placed according to your plan. We receive our position. We receive our place. We receive all we need through your amazing grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this day that you made especially. You made this day especially for us. And we will on purpose rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. For you made it. Just like you made the first day, you make every day as they continue to follow and obey your commands. We learn from the earth our assignment in you. The freedom to move forward so we can do what we do. Hallelujah. And that's to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. We love you today, Father. We love you today, Father. We're grateful today. Glory to God. Greet a couple of people around you and have a seat. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. Boy, these years just spin by, don't they? We about got March knocked in the head. Amen. Not much time left in March. But every day is another opportunity, isn't it? Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. How many of you look forward to every new day and see it as, a, as an opportunity to do better than you did the day before? You know what I mean? Really, that should be, uh, that should be something that we wake up to. Us talking to ourselves about doing better that day. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Walking in a greater understanding. Being carefree and careless. Able to move forward, do what needs to be done. Be a blessing to people. Be humble. Be grateful. Hallelujah. So grateful that we get the opportunity we get. Hallelujah. Do any of, any of you have any idea how amazing it is that you're around? Just think, if, if you weren't, what would we do? Huh? What would we do if it wasn't for you? Now, some of us may be able to do without you, but what, were, what would those that are close to you do without you? Huh? Have you ever just given yourself a, an attaboy? Now, my dad told me, he said, don't, don't, don't break your arm patting yourself on the back. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about living in a place of humility yes. and understanding just how blessed you are yes, right. and how blessed you can be in other people's lives. Hallelujah. Simply by recognizing <laughs> you being placed where you've been placed. I'm sure glad God knew what he was doing when he made mankind, when he made the earth, when he filled it with his glory, when he gave us an opportunity to know him, not just be his children, but to know him, to be able to enjoy the life that only he has available for us. You know, something's been getting next to me uh, recently, and uh, I've heard it already mentioned several times today from the stage and in some of the, maybe the jump start, about God's goodness, the goodness of God, simply the goodness of God. You know, the book of Psalms tells us in, in Psalms 23, 6, that surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. His goodness. His goodness and His mercy will follow us all the days of our life. How are you and goodness getting along? That's what I want to know today. How are you and goodness getting along? Do you get along well together? Do you recognize the goodness that God surrounds you with? It? You know, everything He has is always everywhere. He's either around you because you know Him, or He's around you because He wants you to know Him. His goodness and His mercy follows us all the days of our life. There are people that, from a visible perspective, seem to be good seem to be pretty steady. But it doesn't make any difference how we see people. How are they seeing themselves? Where are they? Are they as free as they look? Or do they wish they were? Are their days filled with, with sadness and sorrow? Do they do whatever they can do just to make it through that day? Because you know the goodness, the goodness of God is what draws people to a place where they can 
live in that goodness. He's the only one that can do it. I'd call it the miracle of goodness. I mean, it's quite obvious that over the centuries, nobody's come up with a a sermon or a set of teachings or sermons that assure the work of God in the hearts of men. Honestly, all it is is man's feeble attempts to articulate how amazing and how wondrous God's works are, His goodness. In Romans, uh, Romans chapter 2, I want you to get what you need this morning. I just want to look at uh, at one verse. You can read the whole chapter if you wish. It uh, it's uh, worthy of reading and meditating on. It has a lot to do with a lot of different things, but goodness is uh, kind of the focus from my my perspective. Romans chapter two, verse four. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Now that's a huge verse, and it says a lot about goodness. I mean, if goodness is something that is doing all it can to attract people to a place where they'll change, where at the time they'll take advantage of what they're hearing and act on it. As a matter of fact, God is so good and... and, and, uh, uh, orderly and meticulous in what he does and how he does it, but he sets it up where he will even empower you to make the change. All he looks for initially is your willingness. It's amazing that, that God puts so much in man's hands, but man acts like he doesn't have anything to do with anything. Himself, I mean. But he's left everything up to us. We see in this verse that the goodness of God, and I believe that's the greatest assignment on God's goodness, is setting people up to make a decision to receive him and the eternal life that goes along with that. Hallelujah. And I believe with that goodness is the empowerment to walk it out and to finish whatever race they're given to run. All wrapped up in his goodness. Goodness is his kindness. It's his integrity. It's his gentleness. And any other words along those lines that you'd like to use. His devotion to his plan, his love for man, all of that is wrapped up in his goodness. Everything that God is points to everything he wants for his kids. Everything he wants for you and I 
is wrapped up in his goodness, his patience, his forbearance, his long suffering, his putting up with us. Everything has to do with what he wants for us. And that being the case, he packaged it all in his word and then gives us an opportunity, if we desire, to be exposed to what the word says is the foolishness of preaching for him to be able to convey this goodness This heart's desire that he has that none be lost. And then he uses the miracle of goodness. How's that working? How's that working? Let me tell you what it looks like from my perspective. Week in and week out. Service in and service out, evenings, days, whenever. It's actually, it's actually pressure-free, but yet there's such a desire to see people walk not just knowing about his goodness, but living in his goodness. And so, so for me, it's always, it's always wondering if, if it was right. Did you say enough? In my case, sometimes I ask myself, did you say too much? Did you say it in the wrong way? But you know what? I made a decision years ago. I'm not going to second guess myself. I'm going to believe I'm led by the Spirit of God. I believe I'm going to say exactly what needs to be said. To some, it'll be an eye-opener. To others, it may be crass. But some may be well off, and the others might end up on there. I'm just saying without saying But I know it's the right group because it took you literally no time at all (laughs) to get your in motion. But honestly, I just want you to know this morning just a little bit about what it's like to walk around even in a group this size and not know everybody. Obviously, I'm not going to know, know everybody, but be familiar with faces and, and just wonder, are you taking advantage of the goodness of God? Has the miracle of God's goodness changed your life? Because he can't make it happen for you. He can surround people with his goodness. We can find ourselves in this great nation with all the comforts that we have, even those who may be a little uncomfortable, but yet not know his goodness. Because what he's made isn't anything compared to you and what you've been made for. Just think, He wants you to be filled with peace, joy, purpose, direction, peace, peace, a knowing, a confidence, a trust that's unbelievable. You don't have to think about anything that He has to offer you because you know that he's not a man that he should lie. You know that he has, he has the answers to all your questions. Even though I'm sure he'd like to tell some of us, why are you concerned about that? Why are you allowing something that makes no difference at all? 
Why would you allow that to give you nightless sleep? Or you could combine it with a sleepless night. But it's dark, but there's no rest. The goodness of God. The miracle work of goodness. The desire for that goodness to provide for you. Everything that you've ever wanted. Prosperity and health are wrapped up in his goodness. Protection, direction, affection. His affection which is affection. Everything combined, all in His goodness. And that same goodness is what draws you. Not everybody recognizes that goodness, and not everybody takes advantage of that goodness. That's what I think about every service. Not just are you taking advantage of the things that goodness has to offer? Has that goodness activated your desire to receive goodness himself, perfection himself? Do you think about but can't come to grips with what it's going to take? Well, let me be quick to tell you, it's not going to take anything but your willingness to change. You know, I, I'm sure I wasn't any different than most people. You know, it doesn't make a difference what you have, where you go, or what you do. If you're miserable, you're miserable. Yeah. If you're unhappy, you're unhappy. Yeah. Makes no difference whether you're driving something nice or yeah. you don't have a ride. The goodness of God wants you to have and enjoy the peace that only comes from a knowing that you're in Him. That He has done for you absolutely everything you can't do. And He's just asking you if you'd like to join Him. If you'd like to join Him. I look on some of the faces. I may know some circumstances or situations in part, but none of us know everybody. None of us have a clue as to where you really are with yourself, and thank God we don't. (laughs) I mean, thank God we don't know all your ins and outs. You don't know all my ins and outs. We were not really created for anybody to know all of our ins and outs, but Him. His goodness is to draw us to Him, not to each other. And when we're drawn to Him, then we realize that He's good with us. He's got a plan for us, a place for us, a purpose for us, a life for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it makes no difference what anybody else thinks. It's what do we think about the opportunity we've been given to walk in that goodness. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. People really, people really, that's what people cry out for. They they want, they want things to flow good. They want things to go good. They want things to be well with others. They want to do good themselves. Most people are not all that complicated. Yeah. They get complicated when they get addicted. Yeah. They get complicated when they begin to do things as a diversion from the lack of peace that they have. Yeah. So instead of looking within, they look without And medicate within. They look without. What can I do? What can I do? Why? How come my life's not better? How come things aren't smoother? How come I'm not happy with me? 
You'll never be happy with you until you're happy in a relationship with Him. Such a simple, stinking message. There is no peace into the heart and the life of the person who isn't in the Prince of Peace. Nothing or no one can fill that void but Him. That's it. Your misery will do nothing more than multiply. You will be the you will be the initial person who found the bottom of the black hole. <laughs> you will be the first one to the black hole to find the bottom. And the thing about a black hole is the entrance is black and it gets increasingly darker as you continue to fix it. I mean, the world has lights available for you that they have sworn will keep you lit up. And they may, in one definition. (laughs) But they will not illuminate your life. The hole gets darker. The rope gets more attractive. The pistol becomes an alternative. You've got a way figured out to buy plenty of dope. You're going to find a bright spot. He's following you right now. He's following you right now. Mr. Goodness and Mr. Mercy are on your tail. And they will not fail to take take you to a place that you're looking for. But you've never yet made that move. It's what His goodness is all about. It's what His goodness is about today. Some people, some people even know Him, but they're not taking advantage of that goodness. They still think they, they and all their skills rival His, but nobody, nobody knows you like He does. Nobody can use you like He can, and most certainly, nobody's ever been born that will love you as much as He did. And it's his goodness coming in contact with your, I'm finished. That will supercharge a new beginning. Amen. His goodness. His goodness. When it runs into your miserable, it will give you an opportunity to move forward. But that won't be the end of the journey. Because he didn't come for a date. He didn't come for a one night stand. He didn't come for a sleepover. He came for a bride. He came for a bride. He came for people who would acknowledge that they had come to the end of themselves. Some people do find that at the end of a rope, which we'd call too late in the old country. But then there are others that when they do, it's a miraculous change. Many of you have had that change. But many of you don't acknowledge the fact that that change has transpired and consequently you don't take advantage of it like you really could 
Because the goodness of God is always following us to bring us to a place where we will change, where we will repent, where we will move forward, where we will begin to take care to enjoy and honor the things that He's given us to do. I, I'm, not, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that that, that, that uh, heavenly ticket that, that people have stuffed away somewhere in a closet or somewhere. Or they maybe feel as if something happened, but there, there was never really any change. There was never any change. Life really didn't present itself in an easier way. But you did something religious. You know, you can always tell when there's been change. When you do better. Just when you do better. I didn't say when you got a raise. When you do better. When you do good all by, by yourself. When every time you get alone, your lunch gets eaten. You're eating your own lunch. Huh? Is anybody, has, anybody, has anybody ever lived like that for crying out loud? Now, I know a couple of you haven't, so you guys just relax. Pray in tongues or something. But most of us, we've, we've, we've been at that table where we believe something happened, but there's nothing happening. And I'm persuaded you don't have a good connection with goodness. I think if you have a good connection with goodness... You ought, to, you ought to consider things becoming good. I mean, if His goodness draws you to... I won't even use the word repent. If, he, if, if His goodness is not drawing you to a place where, where things are better for you, where you're not always beating yourself up, you're not always beating somebody else up. <laughs> huh? I mean, that, that can't be anything good about that. I mean, that's a poor definition of good if your goodness is beating you and everybody else up. I mean, you would think that we just automatically think, you know, I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> There's something not good about my good. Why aren't things better? Why are not things getting better? Why are you not doing things differently? Why do we think we're good if we're still not good? I mean, I'd want to know, I'd want to redo on that. Seriously, I mean, I mean, I don't believe that's a lack of faith. I believe I'd want to redo. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if I still feel like I, I want to redo, huh? If I don't have a spark of peace or if I'm still eating my own lunch, uh, I, need, I need a redo, right. huh? Or maybe a first do. <laughs> because right now this whole thing looks like doo-doo. <laughs> Come on now, has anybody had some of their, their, their Christianity kind of like that? It's just kind of, kind of dry, kind of worthless, kind of what in the flip? I mean, you know, how come these people are all acting like they're excited and I'm miserable? Huh? Because you're not good with you. His goodness and mercy is not just to follow you, it's to be in you. It's to be provoking you to move forward, to not allow yourself to take steps backward, but to continue to move. 
toward him in everything you do. This life with him is not Ali Ali in free. Huh? It's not Red Rover, Red Rover. Send Chewy right over. (laughs) Or Red Rover, Red Rover. Would you please move over? (laughs) I'm talking about the goodness of God that sparks a desire for repentance or change in the hearts of men and women. Not a warm fuzzy. Not 30 minutes later, you know, what the hell did I do? I don't feel anything. You're not going to feel anything. I don't care if you're crying your eyes out. You're not going to feel what faith has to offer. You can't feel faith. But you can know faith. If you can know him, that's all you need to know. And if you do know him, you will stay vitally connected to him. And you will begin to see change in your life. Hey, listen, really. I mean, I'm not degreed in any of these things, but I'm persuaded that you'll never come to a place where you don't see yourself less than you really should. I'm talking about humility. Humility will be the greatest enemy of most people that enter the kingdom of God. Now, there are young men and women. There are people that have been born, born again at an early age, lived a, a, a miraculous life that obviously still needed every bit of the blood of Jesus in order to be born again. But they have no add-ons. They've got no extras in their life that have to be dealt with. But I think it's very healthy to keep guard on yourself. I think it's very healthy for you to determine a plan for your life and your activities. Obviously, the church can help with that. But the bottom line is, ultimately, his goodness has to become your goodness. Happiness, prosperity, wealth, good things, confidence. That's what your life's supposed to look like. Not an amount, but a position. It'd have to be good since he authored it. If we thought of ourselves as highly as we should, we'd all be doing better. Thinking more highly of yourself is realizing why you can be high. This is not a plan that we figured out. But it's obvious that believers don't think much of themselves. Or they do better than they're doing. It's easy to see that the Bible's packed with promises that God was not the least bit upset about all of his children walking in. 
but yet most don't even ever come close to it. But his goodness is still there. He hasn't changed any. He's still only got one plan. He's just got plan A for everybody. Huh? So if you've got to do something with your baggage, then just, you know, we'll get bigger drums out here to burn it in. Maybe we ought to take it out in the oil field and just uncover one of those great big giant, whatever they are, storage tanks. Cut the top out of it. Just, just drive by and throw all of our baggage in there. Trying to avoid not throwing one another in, but... But whatever baggage may be legitimately excess and get rid of it. Because nobody will get rid of your baggage for you. Have you noticed sometimes that the baggage you have seems to be attractive to baggage like it? Yeah. That'd be like somebody said, you know, I just, uh, I, uh, the five guys I were married to, ma- were married to were just, they were all horrible. <laughs> Is that right, Magnet? <laughs> <laughs> the goodness of God. The goodness of God is in the room right now. I don't feel it, but I know he's here. (laughs) Right now, I'm not sure some of you are still in the room. (laughs) I mean, I haven't seen anybody leave, but that doesn't mean there's still crawl space. You just kind of slink out of the chair. (laughs) I think what precipitated this this morning is that uh, uh, I think it's legitimately closer than it's ever been. I know less than I ever had as far as the timing and all that's transpiring. But it's, let me tell you, let me say it this way. It's too close for anybody to put it off if you haven't taken advantage of what he's done for you. Because you don't have any guarantees if you're not a child of God. And the enemy is trying to destroy whoever he can, whenever he can. He's not omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent like our Father. So he just stumbles into a mess and makes it worse. But being ready is going to be the most important thing on my agenda from now to the end. And then closely behind that is making it clear to everyone that the moment you step in is the moment you get busy. Is the moment you start asking questions. What must I do next? What must I do next to move forward? What can I do this afternoon? What can I do when I go home from church? Is there something I could read? Is there something I can do? Is there somebody in this house? I'll even buy your lunch if you'll just give me a little clue at lunch as to what I can do to make this the way it's supposed to be. Honestly, there has to be a 
a desire in the heart of the repentant. to find out the steps they need to take as soon as possible to move forward. Because my husband's at the house and he's already PO'd that I've come to church. I come from a long line of haters and I'm going to run into all of them this afternoon. I'd like kind of a crash course on avoiding crashes. The law is after me. What do you propose I do? (laughs) Now, we're going to tell you what to do. We're going to help you, whether that's today or any day. But you have to initiate it. Just like John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever receives him will have eternal, everlasting life, whosoever. Actually, that's a pretty big deal that you step into when you make that decision to be saved, to step into the kingdom. Because that's a big place, salvation. Hallelujah. Now, a lot of places don't give it much press. But, man, you step into salvation. You know, you you get overwhelmed by just thinking you got born again and can't figure that out. Now, we're talking about salvation. We're talking about an abundant life. We're talking about freedom. We're talking about more than enough. We're talking about more than conquerors. We're talking about overcomers. We're talking about a lifestyle that none of your family's ever been involved in. Huh? We're talking about a lifestyle that 97% of Christians are not involved in. And I'm going to tell you, it's right there for the taking. The line's not even long. The line's not long. Huh? There's a, there's a spot for you probably close to the front. Yeah. There'll be people that know so little. They'll say, oh, go ahead and get in front of me. Go on. Here, you come on up front. I'll, I'll get there later. Yeah, well, I want to get to the front of the line. Because I just found out that I'm free. I just found out that I'm free. And I found out that what I've been freed into has some tangibility. Stuff goes with my freedom. Now the best stuff, don't let me, let me, don't let me, let me, the best stuff is in him. I'm telling you, the other stuff won't make any difference if that peace is not in there. That knowing is not in there. That confidence is not in there. But, it, but, 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 but when it is, And if it really is, then that other stuff can happen quickly, quickly, quickly. And let me tell you something. Hmm? You're not going to be fighting many people for it either. It's not going to be a struggle. Not going to be a struggle. Because when you start taking the next steps the way they're supposed to be taken, huh? maybe we need to get some... Choose life blinders yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Big old long blinders. They, just, they don't just go here. They'll go out about five, six feet. 
so you can pass lots of people and not even look at the scowls on their face. Yeah. 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 Huh? Or all their ideas. Yeah. Huh? All of their what ifs and buts. Yeah. You got big old blinders on. You just start walking down through there. You'll say, golly, life's clear already. I don't have yeah. all that so stuff I'm having to stare at here. I'm telling you, it's the goodness of God. Yeah. It's the goodness of God. And I'm going to promise you something else. You're going to actually begin to appreciate yourself. Good. You're going to actually begin to appreciate yourself. You're going to be able to say what PK said to the kids all these years. Yeah. You can say to yourself, you're good stuff. Yeah. God didn't make a mistake with me. I made plenty of them. But his son already swallowed those up. I am not a mistake. He had his eyes on me from eternity to eternity. And I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm not going to play. And I'm going to continue to talk this way. I want you to drag the most potentially have to watch how you say it here. I don't want to I don't want to disrupt anybody's life. But. His message is for the good, the bad, and the good and the bad from wherever. But he's got a criteria. They have to be willing to deny themselves. That conversation can't be had too quickly. Did you hear me? That may frighten some people off, but others, maybe just by a grab by the shirt collars, say, let me tell you something. You've just got an opportunity that millions, probably billions of people have blown off. Don't risk it by thinking you can do this on your own. You have to have him every step of the way. Because his goodness is going to come to you the better you get. Amen. So don't be intimidated. Don't y'all be intimidated. Well, what if I offend somebody? Good. I'm going to say good because at least you did something. We will straighten you out if you got got to a place where you offended somebody. But listen, somebody that's sincere, you're probably not going to offend. You're probably not going to offend. And there are many many people here that obviously can't be offended. We do have some that can be offended. We don't have a list of those people. That would be rude if we were to give you a a list of offendable people. (laughs) Amen. These people are offendable. (laughs) Stay away from these folks. They're offendable. They're dependably offendable. They have a propensity to offense. But you know, we're all fixable. We're all fixable, and actually none of us are hateable. As a matter of fact, we're all lovable. Amen? In the eyes of our Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to give you two opportunities right now. I want to give you two opportunities. First opportunity I'm going to give you is the one that's the most important. And that's if you could publicly declare today, after what you've heard, that uh, you need that uh, you need that goodness to begin to do its work in your life. Obviously, if you've never if you've never received the gift of eternal life that Jesus paid for you to have, then that's the most important thing that you can do. But you can also find yourself in a position where you need to do 
what you need to do because you're, you're not sure what you've done did anything. I'm not even sure I can say that again. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't want to, you don't want to not know that you're where you need to be with him. And this is not to give you some sort of a sin consciousness. No, you want to be, you want to be righteousness conscience, but you don't want to have any concern about it. You just have to know. So first of all, are there any of you that would say, Pastor, I, I, I'm not in the kingdom of God. I've never, I've never personally or publicly received him. Or you would say, I, I'm not sure about that relationship. Say, so really, I, I live kind of like you were talking about. I'm just, I'm never really in a, what I would call a good place or a confident place. Either one of those. I want you to just hold up your hand if you would. Now, I know there are many of you, but I'm not expecting you to, many of you to acknowledge it. But I just want you to know I know that. I know it every week. I know there are people that are not confident with that relationship. I don't want you, when you do make that decision, to have any reservations about making it. Because you're not going to surprise me. And you're not going to surprise God. And there's only one of those two I mentioned that makes any difference. And that's Him. What people think or do around you means nothing as it pertains to your life. But we're here for you personally. Is there anyone at all? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, just so you'll know, but you don't need to. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Is everybody good? I mean, good. Is everybody good with their life? Everybody good with the direction they're going? Everybody good with their relationship with Him? Because it's just between you and Him. It has nothing to do with anybody else. The only reason it makes a difference to me is because what he's called me to be. Called me to understand. Called me to know what it's like to be free. Hallelujah. Everybody's good. Hallelujah. 
Thank God. Say, I'm better than I've ever been. Was that everybody? Say, I'm better than I've ever been louder. <laughs> well, I don't know why I didn't say I'm better than I've ever been louder. <laughs> How'd you like to have a classroom of these people, you know? <laughs> Say, I'm better than I've ever been, but not louder. I'm just going to go ahead and take your word for it now. Um, I am going to give you one more, just a quick opportunity to, uh, to honor God with your tithes and offerings. Actually, John 3.16 makes it very clear how he is. And oh, by the way, how he is is how you are if you're in him because you've taken on his nature. God so loved that he, what did he do? He gave. Give you an opportunity to do that. You know, the electronic uh, is on the uh, over, overhead. Thank you, Father. You can text to give. You can go to the Choose Life app. You can text to 84321. Mail a check. P.O. Box 22, Hobbs, New Mexico. Give cash. Give by credit card. Hallelujah. You know, it's easy to tell when something's up. When it's hard to get you guys to raise your voice. Take this understanding with you. Ask the Father to give you words. Fill your mouth. When you're around those that he would have you open your mouth and begin to share the truth. Don't be concerned about any repercussions. Just be who you are. Be a child of God. Humbly grateful that you found out about him and want everybody else to be in that same position. Not trying to tell anybody what to do, what to become, what to run away from, but just what God's done for you. Amen? Go ahead and stand to our feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're so grateful for your goodness, your love, so grateful for the opportunities that you give us not just to become your children, but to continue to grow and flourish. Thank you for this great group of people, great church, great opportunities that you've given us, Father. Thank you that things continue to grow exponentially in Jesus' name. Go ahead and receive. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul that is within me. 
bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, in Jesus' name, as we go today, we go knowing that you go with us. You continue to watch over us. Thank you that you protect us, you provide for us. Thank you that everyone passes safely to their homes, their loved ones, their businesses, their places of employment. And they continue to stay acutely aware of where they are, who they are, and what you've called them to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and play us out. Glory to God. Love you guys a bunch.